If the early bird gets the worm, I'll sleep in until there's pancakes. Today, I'm going to recap a 2013 action crime film called Outer Furnace. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. The movie begins with the story of a man named Harlan de Grote, who was seen watching a movie in his car in a park. He was accompanied by his female friend who was laughing at him. Unable to accept being belittled by his female friends, Harlan banged the woman's face against the car's dashboard. The commotion was heard by the man who was also watching in the garden. Then the man defends Harlan's girlfriend and a fight ensues. Unfortunately, the man was beaten badly by Harlan. Elsewhere, a man named Russell Bays works at a Pennsylvania steel mill. Russell saw his younger brother, Rodney Bays Jr.'s car, parked outside the racetrack on his way home from work. Russell got out of the car and approached him. Rodney just lost a horse racing bet. Rodney then admitted that he borrowed money from a loan shark named John Petty, who owned a bar and ran illegal things. Russell was annoyed with his brother's behavior, who had owed him just to gamble. However, he did not have the heart to scold the behavior of his only brother whom he loved. The next day, Russell visited his father who was lying sick. His father is cared for at home by his uncle, Red Bays. There, Russell also met Rodney, who turned out to be a military member and would soon be assigned to Iraq. After visiting his father, Russell then visited John, the moneylender who had lent money to his brother. When he was about to enter John's room, it turned out that John was with a guest who spoke in a threatening tone. The guest was Harlan. Russell then entered without permission, and it made Harlan a little annoyed that he reprimanded him. Then, Russell gave his monthly salary to John to pay off his brother's debt. He promised to pay the rest when he received next month's paycheck. However, Russell asked John to keep his actions a secret from Rodney. Then, Russell spent time drinking at John's bar before heading home. That night, Russell came home by driving his car drunk. At that time, the streets looked deserted. Unexpectedly, a car came down the road from above and stopped in a transverse position. Russell was too late to hit the brakes. He couldn't dodge and hit the car. Unfortunately, there was a mother and her young child in the car he hit. After getting out of the car and checking the condition of the passengers, he was shocked because the two passengers had died because of him. Russell's accident case made him imprisoned for eight years. Rodney always visited him in prison, but Russell's girlfriend, Lana Taylor, never showed up. Rodney said he was going to Iraq soon and might not see him for a long time. Years passed until Rodney finally returned after his military duty in Iraq was completed. While visiting his brother, Rodney told him that their father, who had been ill for a long time, had recently passed away. Russell was very sad to hear the news. Now Rodney was the only family in his life. Long story short, Russell was finally free from prison. On the day of his release, he was picked up by Rodney. The first place he visited after being released from prison was the graves of his father and mother. Then he wanted to see Lena. Finally, he found out why his girlfriend never saw him in prison because Lena already had a boyfriend, a police chief named Wesley Barnes. Russell could only stare at him from afar. The scene shifts to the lives of these brothers after the difficult times that Russell experienced. Sometime later, Russell gets his old job at a Pennsylvania steel mill while Rodney is seen taking part in an illegal fight. Rodney looks quite difficult to overcome his opponent. Several times he fell to the ground and was hit quite hard. However, things turned around after his opponent insulted his mother. Rodney's anger was provoked. He seemed to gain additional energy until finally he could win the fight. As it turned out, his participation in this illegal fight was to pay off his debts to John that had accumulated. Seeing Rodney winning in this fight, John was actually annoyed because he had bet on Rodney's defeat and now he had a loss. Then John advises Rodney who he thinks is unsuitable for being a fighter because he can't control his emotions. John then advised Rodney to follow in his brother's footsteps by working in a metal factory. Rodney, whose face was battered and feeling a little dizzy, just didn't listen to John's advice. Meanwhile, Russell, who had been at home and was waiting for Rodney to come home, was surprised when he saw his condition. However, he did not inquire further about the incident that injured him. Rodney went straight to his room and seemed reluctant to talk. The next day, while cleaning up the leftovers from breakfast, 
Russell saw the hand bandages in the trash. He immediately spoke to Rodney and advised him to stop being a fighter. He asked him to come with him to work in a metal factory. The payoff might not be as great when compared to working as a fighter, but at least he could use it to live. Hearing Russell's advice, Rodney became angry. He said that he no longer cared about life. He then showed the scars he got while serving in Iraq and argued that serving the country only resulted in depression because he saw many war victims falling before his eyes. What's more, after that he did not feel an affluent life. In the afternoon, Rodney visited John at his bar. There he begged John to register himself in the fight to pay his debts. At first, John is reluctant to register Rodney because the risks are high and the fight's organizers are notoriously fraudulent. However, because Rodney continued to insist, finally he was willing to fulfill Rodney's request. Later, John calls Harlan, the man who arranged the fight to include Rodney in the next illegal fight. Elsewhere, Russell is seen meeting with Lena. He begs her so they can be together again. However, Lena rejects Russell, especially since she is pregnant because of her relationship with Wesley. While crying, the two embraced. Russell was trying to let Lena go. After meeting Lena, he then visits the crash site when he crashes into a car. He laid a wreath to offer his condolences to the accident victims. The next day, he meets his uncle Red, who takes him hunting in the forest. Feeling tired, he obeyed his uncle's invitation. Elsewhere, Rodney is seen with John to meet Harlan, who underestimates Rodney's fighting ability because of his stature and looks that are not like a fighter. Hearing Harlan's taunts, Rodney gets angry and challenges him to prove that he is capable enough to take part in an illegal fight. Luckily, John was able to resolve the dispute. Later, John took Rodney out and asked him to talk. He asked Rodney to give up in the next fight because that's what he and Harlan agree. Rodney was silent because he was still mad at Harlan. He hadn't decided if he would give in. Moments later, Rodney began to fight. His fiery rage allows him to attack well and overwhelm his opponent. Seeing this, John gave a stern warning to Rodney to give in. Rodney then obeyed John's wishes. He didn't fight back at all when he was attacked. However, his opponent beat him blindly, forcing John into the battle arena to save Rodney. After the game, Harlan approaches John and says that his business is done because Harlan won the bet money in the fight that was fought by Rodney. Then, they went home. John was relieved to not have to deal with Harlan in the car. Unfortunately, his estimate was wrong because on the way, their car was intercepted by Harlan and his men. Harlan then approached John's car, which had stopped at the end of the bridge. When John saw Harlan, his cell phone accidentally fell under the car seat and connected his bartender's number to voicemail. Then, through the car window, Harlan brought his face closer to John and said he wasn't done, then he shot him dead. Harlan ordered his men to drag Rodney and take him to a warehouse. That night, Russell, who had returned from hunting, entered Rodney's room. He finds a letter. In the letter, Rodney apologized to Russell for not taking his advice not to fight. He promised that the fight he would live his last fight. After this fight, he promised to work in a metal factory. At the same time, Rodney is being tortured by Harlan's men. As Harlan walked into the barn, he asked Rodney to see his face. However, Rodney actually mocked Harlan by calling him a coward. His insults inevitably angered Harlan. He shot Rodney straight away. After Rodney died, Harlan ordered his men to bury his body in the middle of the forest. The next day, Wesley comes to Russell's house. At first, Russell thought that he came to his house because of his relationship with Lena in the past. However, his prediction turned out wrong because he came to inform him of John's death in the forest. Later, at the police station, John is shown a voice recording before John's death. It turned out that the seconds before John died had been accidentally recorded into his bartender's voicemail. However, the police had difficulty finding Rodney, who was with John at the time of his death. Even though the police had interrogated the people at the scene of the fight, they were all silent. Hearing this, Russell felt very upset. He even accused Wesley and the police of incompetence in handling the case of Rodney's disappearance. Sometime later, Russell and his uncle came to John's office to find information about Harlan's address. The bartender that Russell met at John's office said he didn't know Harlan's address, but he knew where the fight was taking place. 
In his investigation, Russell discovers the fact that John has a debt to Harlan with a very large amount and will be paid off with a fight agreement. Russell and his uncle immediately went to the location of the fight. Unfortunately, they found no one there. Later that night, Russell visits a parking area and pretends to buy drugs from Harlan's men. At first, they are reluctant to serve Russell because they think he is an undercover cop, though they end up taking him to Harlan's headquarters. However, because many people were in the place, he didn't recognize Harlan. His mission must end in failure. While Russell was driving with his uncle, a local policeman stopped him. The cop received orders from Wesley to ask Harlan to get out of there as soon as possible. The policeman also added that these people are known to take the law into their own hands and are not friendly with people outside their area. The cop would escort Russell and his uncle until they were out of the area. If they disobeyed, the policeman would arrest them. Russell and his uncle were forced to obey the police's orders and return home. A few days later, Wesley was waiting for him at the factory exit after work. There he said police had found Rodney's body buried in the woods. Hearing this, Russell tried to be strong. That evening, Wesley and Lena visit Russell's house and offer their condolences. Lena asks Russell not to investigate Rodney's death alone and leaves the case to the police. Several months passed, Russell tried to live a normal life. Although he gets word that the police have raided Harlan's house, Harlan's whereabouts are still unknown. After waiting for months to no avail, finally, Russell decided to take matters into his own hands. He sneaks into John's office to find out information about Harlan. There, he found Harlan's phone number and called him right away. He asked Harlan to come to the bar where John's office was. He said he would pay John's remaining debts. That night, Harlan came to the bar accompanied by one of his men. He carried a very large bag and entered through the back street. Russell, who had been lurking, directly approached the bar door with a gun. Inside, the bar bartender is threatened and interrogated by Harlan, who asked for information about the person who called him. The clueless bartender was shot by Harlan. Russell manages to incapacitate Harlan's men in another room and prepares to shoot him. However, Harlan fired his gun so hard that Russell had to take cover. Unfortunately, when Harlan managed to get out, the car could not be started because it had been sabotaged. He was forced to run away from his car and hide in an empty factory. Russell followed him and they fought. Russell manages to shoot Harlan in the leg, but he can still stand. Russell then asked him to walk into the forest. In the distance, Wesley had arrived and asked Russell to stop his actions. However, Russell paid no heed to the warning. When Harlan was seen walking away, he shot Harlan in the back and killed him. At the end of the film, Russell is seen at his house. After killing Harlan, he was not imprisoned because Wesley stood up for him and arranged for Russell to be acquitted. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more video like this.